Welcome to this lesson in our series on waves. Today we will investigate longitudinal waves. Let's look at a demonstration of a longitudinal wave by Shanti. We pull and push on the spring along its length and we repeat the pulling and pushing vibration. It sets up a pattern of vibration in the spring. Let's review this pattern in slow motion. A series of pushes and pulls runs down the spring. The pushing and pulling on the spring disturbs it and creates a wave which runs along the spring. The direction of the disturbance and the direction of wave travel are parallel to each other. We call this type of wave where the direction of disturbance is parallel to the direction of wave travel, a longitudinal wave. This wave consists of a series of compressions where the coils of the spring are squashed closely together and rarefactions where the coils of the spring are stretched further apart. As you can see, the coils of the spring are compressed when the spring is pushed in and they are stretched apart when the spring is extended again. The compressions and rarefactions alternate along the length of the spring. The spring carries the energy which it receives from pushes and pulls and the coils move from its rest position. Therefore, they have kinetic energy and they also have elastic potential energy. The elastic potential energy of the coils changes as they are pulled apart and pushed closer together. We can therefore define a longitudinal wave as a wave where the particles in the medium move parallel to the direction of propagation of the wave. The diagram for a longitudinal wave is shown as different parts that move close together and far apart. As discussed before, the wavelength of a wave is the length of one complete cycle of a wave. The wavelength of a transverse wave can be determined when you measure the length from the crest to the crest or from the trough to the next trough. We face a problem because a longitudinal wave does not have a crest, so how can we measure the wavelength? When the pulses are close together, we call these parts of the wave compressions. It is quite a suitable name as the particles are compressed. The parts that are far apart are called rarefractions. So therefore, to measure a wavelength on a longitudinal wave, one has to measure the distance between two compressions or two rarefractions. Remember, the period is the time taken for one complete wave to pass a certain point. If you look at a longitudinal wave, it will be the time it takes for one compression to start to the start of the next compression. Now because the period is still valid for a longitudinal wave, the frequency is also valid and we can therefore use the wave equation for longitudinal waves as well. It is hard to see the amplitude on a longitudinal wave, but we can relate the wave motion back to a transverse wave. This will help us to indicate the amplitude and points in and out of phase. Let's look at some of the properties of a longitudinal wave. Sound waves are an example of longitudinal waves. They require a medium in which to propagate. Therefore, they cannot travel in a vacuum like a transverse wave. Sound waves have a much longer wavelength than light. Sound waves can diffract or bend around buildings or move through doorways. This explains why you can often hear people when you can't see them. For sound waves, the intensity of the sound is the amount of energy it has. The more energy or amplitude the wave has, the louder the sound wave. You are very rarely asked to indicate the wavelength on a longitudinal wave, but let's look at an example. For a transverse wave, the wavelength is the distance between two crests or two troughs. If we think back, the actual definition of wavelength is the distance between two successive or consecutive points in phase. Let's join Tracy to look at this phenomenon. So if I look at my diagram, that would mean for me that if I chose this as my first point in phase, then the start of my next compression over here, that is where my wavelength would be because these two points represent the start of the compression and they're going to move forward together and then they're going to move backwards together. So this 
would be my wavelength. It's much harder to find the wavelength in a, long, in a longitudinal wave when it's drawn like this. Much, much harder. Now that we have come to the end of our lesson on longitudinal waves, you can try the task in our task video on the Mindset website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Also, have a look at some of our other videos on more physical science topics. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.